I'm just going to get straight into it. We are making a flipper knife. Now, I will confess that this knife is something that was meant to have shipped about a year ago. Um, no excuses. Well, I've got loads, loads of excuses, but none of them valid. I came up with an idea. I thought, hey, let's make a high-end flipper knife. Um, had never even attempted anything like that before. Um, barely knew CNC. And I said it to uh, Nathan, who uh, used to work here, doesn't work here anymore. Um, I said, hey, why don't we make, like, pre-order and make um, a high-end flipper knife? I reckon I can do it in three months. He said yes. Um, I wasn't actually serious, that's the thing. I, I was kind of just throwing it out there, you know, just for fun, expecting expecting them to say, you know, we got other projects to do and stuff like that. And he said, I think that's a good idea. And I was, um, I sort of didn't like to admit that it was kind of a joke and I just went, uh, okay, well, I guess we're gonna make a high-end flipper knife. That was the seed of it, but it quickly became uh, like a real, I really got into the project. Like, it was like this, this uh, sort of minimalist, slim thing. Uh, it took a bit of time, you know, did the CAD drawings and sort of, we basically sort of pre-sold it, pre-ordered it just on CAD drawings alone, you know, and made, uh, you know, what I think is a good number of sales. I won't go into details now, but long story short, I completely screwed up my business over the last year. Um, and even then, you know, a bit of unluckiness, bit of stupidity, taking on too much, um, you know, expenses wise. And yeah, 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 we've, you know, we got behind on invoices, just, just every horrible thing you can imagine. Um, we're coming out the other end of it now, you know, like they, they we're actually moving where, um, you know, my CNC milling skills are a little bit, more than they were and so I can actually make this knife now. Um, I really did think it was gonna take three months initially, but um, well, you learn things, don't you? So what I did was, because I didn't want to plunge straight in with Project Zero because it's quite a high-end knife, I sort of thought I'd make kind of a generic knife first, which is actually isn't this one, this is the second one. So the Project Zero is actually the third knife, this is the second knife. And it was actually a first one that's sort of like in pieces and not really a full knife, but it was just to learn the process and, and sort of get everything dialed in, um, which is mostly dialed in now. We're sort of, I'm kind of getting somewhere, still getting problems, but they're sort of kind of nearly there. So, you know, I thought it was a good time to sort of start sharing it with you. Um, so I've got the scales for Project Zero. Actually, just quickly, there are nine issues, nine issues just with the, um, the scales alone, um, and so I thought I'll just run quickly through those, just show them to you, you know, like, nice close up, you can see it. Um, once, um, the minor issues, so I thought, you know, it'll be interesting to see, see what kind of things are encountered. Um, this is the first set of Project Zero scales I've made, so I'm actually quite impressed that there was only nine <laughs> issues. Usually my machining is uh, not so good as that, so. Now on most knives, you have a detent hole in the blade and you have the detent ball on either the lock bar or the lock bar insert. But if you take a look at this, you can see that I've got the detent ball pushed in the blade. Now I don't know if that's been done before. Um, I've never looked for it or seen it before, but I, you know, as far as I'm aware, I came up with it, you know, um, but you know, almost everything in the world has been done before, so no doubt someone's come up with it. But I feel it gets a smoother, nicer action. Um, the downside is that you've got to put what I call a, I don't know, the rail, floating detent rail in the scale like this, otherwise the ball will rub against the scale. So issue one, this rail is too close there and too close there. Not a big deal, the rail is a lot farther in than it needs to be anyway, like, I don't know, almost like one and a half mil or something, so, so I can take that back out. Next issue is the machining of the lock bar pocket. This was just a silly one. Basically just that. Um, I didn't I didn't machine it properly, so it's nice and smooth and all good apart from that bit. Issue number three is this water jet cut line here. So it comes all the way up. I actually water jet cut it while it's in blank form before it's machined. If you don't put a circle um, at the end, then it's, it, it, it will crack. Um, the metal will just fatigue and crack. So you put a circle there. It's probably got some technical term, I don't know, but it just relieves it and sort of, um, you know, stops the scale from cracking. Now the next issue is on the left-hand scale. So if you look here, this is the this is the back spacer. I'll go into detail on this some other time. But it's actually a bit loose. It's screwed in just now, but it's actually a little bit loose in there. And if I unscrew it, it'll, it'll, it'll jiggle a little bit. That's just bad sizing on the spigots um, or the boss and the 
sticky up bit, spigot, boss, whatever, and uh, and the bore that it fits into. The next issue um, is even though these these machining lines are, are kind of nice, I don't really want that in here. Um, it's a relatively high end knife, and so you know you kind of want to get rid of that stuff. You you don't really want to see the machining lines um, in that pocket. I mean, even though no one's going to see it inside the knife, you you want to put well, I want to put some sort of pattern or something like that inside it. Now another issue is. If you look at this here, I don't know if you notice it, it's, it's probably hard to see, but hopefully it comes through, is that you see how there's this flat spot all the way up, all the way up there. And if I can get the light just right, you'll see that it's actually like a dog bone, like it's a little bit fatter up here, and a little bit fatter up here. Yeah, there you go, see, and then you can see that it sort of comes down, gets a little bit narrower, and gets fatter again. Now that one will be a little bit tricky to get rid of, I think, because it, the scale's kind of bowing, and as it's machined and it's machine bowed, and as you sand it, you're sanding it flat, so it's doing the ends before it does the middle, and yeah, that'll be an inter interesting one to uh, to figure out. Um, but we'll get there. Oh, the other issue is that um, there's no blade at all. I didn't I didn't manage to get the blade done yet. But here's a blade from the from the magnetron, so you know we can definitely do blades. That's uh, again. That's fully fully CNC done. Um, a little bit of sanding on the on the surface. That's a process I'm still working through. But uh, yeah, it comes out pretty good. Now this last issue is very very minor, but it is an issue. So hopefully you can see this. I didn't make the board deep enough for this pivot screw, and hopefully you can see that it's just sticking up. Like I don't know how much, but it's just ever so slightly. Weirdly enough, the uh, the other scale isn't sticking up. There's a lot more to show. Um, and I'll, I'll show that hopefully in the next video. Now I can hear the milling machine has just stopped. I'll go over it another time, but that is our new CNC lathe. Um, so blue light means it's stopped, it's ready. Um, as you can see in here, But you know what? I will save that for the next video.